Good morning, good afternoon, and welcome to this lesson on simultaneous equations. You know the funny thing? I feel like I've recorded this lesson at least 27 times. Not this actual lesson, but if you look at the number of times that simultaneous equations are used throughout mathematics, they're taught in year 9, 10, 11, 12. Hopefully, at some point, we'll be able to solve these things in our sleep. Now, welcome, I'm Masquerou. Darren, pleased to meet you. If you're new to my channel, can you do me a huge favour? And there is a red arrow over there that I would very much ask you to, whatever it's pointing to, click, because it'll subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you don't want all the notifications, turn the notifications off, but otherwise, click that little bell, and you will get told every time I upload a new video. The videos hopefully are interesting and fun and informative and easy to follow and should get you well up the curve of whatever maths course you're doing. Now it's targeted towards methods one and two uh, here in Australia. Now don't worry about it, simultaneous equations are as usual in every single area of mathematics throughout the world. So this video should be able to help you. What I'm going to do is talk about the learning which is shown above and uh, basically, long story short, we know for simultaneous equations because you've done them in your year 9 and probably done them in year 10. When you solve simultaneous equations, we can do it by elimination or substitution. Those will be the general ways we've shown you. And if you're really, really unlucky, you had a math teacher who then turned around and made you draw them graphically. <laughs> yes, not a lot of fun, but a lot of learning. We're going to extend that today and I'm going to recap some uh, substitution and elimination and I'm going to talk about using the CAS as well. But one of the most important additions is the geometry of simultaneous linear equations. Now, if you remember anything about year 9 and 10 and you've been told anything, when you solve simultaneous equations, you always get a value that x equals and y equals and you would go on and check. But if you didn't understand why you were doing that, it made life a lot more complicated. So uh, the good news is that simultaneous equations are nothing more than straight lines which cross. Well, sort of, because we're going to come to that towards the end of this video. Yes, there's a hook to keep you watching, or maybe you're just going to fast forward now. A bit weird. Um, but the general idea is that generally for that situation where two lines cross, we know the x values and y values are the same, and that allows us to use this substitution or elimination methods. Now, I told you I was going to do it at the end. I'm actually going to do it now. The geometry of simultaneous equations. <sighs> We know that straight lines can be written in two different ways, and I've written them here. There's gradient intercept form, which is y is equal to 3x plus 2, for example. Why is that called gradient intercept form? Well, because there is my gradient, and there is my intercept, and it's written in the form of y equals mx plus c. And we sometimes like it to be that way, because that helps us work out, ah, oh, well, we've got a y-axis intercept of 2. So I'd put a little cross here at 2 and say, oh, I know it crosses through that point there and it's got a gradient of 3, which means 1 across and 3 up. So I'd go 1 across and 3 up and put a kiss, 1 across and 3 up and put a kiss. And lo and behold, join them together in a fairly shonky line. And there we go, we would have my straight line. So that's one way of drawing a line. This other way is this intercept form, like 3x minus 2y is equal to 6. Now, that's the form we tend to write our simultaneous equations in, because particularly for elimination, we put the x's underneath each other and the y's underneath each other, and it helps us solve them. But this is a great way of solving equations as well, because when we put x equals 0, which is otherwise known as the y-axis, then I end up that, you know, I can find a value of y. So when x is equal to 0, that disappears. I have minus 2y equals 6. So y is equal to negative 3. Well, there we go. There's one point on my line. And when I put y equals 0, which is otherwise known as my x-axis, then I actually end up with a point here. And once again, having all these two points and a very chunky line, I can join them together. For simultaneous equations, and as I've just said, for elimination, we much, much prefer it to be in this format here, this x minus y, this something x minus something y equals a constant term. Because then we can compare them and we put them in orders and we can eliminate whatever else. But what I want you to do is look at these two equations here and tell me what do you notice about them. Well, hopefully what you'll notice is I've done nothing more than double the top equation to get to that bottom equation. Yeah, so if I take 3x minus 2y is equal to 6 and I double it, I get 6x minus 4y is equal to 12. So if I plotted both of those on a graph drawing uh, software as Desmos.com or GeoGebra, then what will actually end up is that the straight lines will look exactly the same. They'll be right on top of each other. They are the same line. Okay, that's interesting. What about these following two lines? Now, again, 
you might be going, whoa, 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 hold on, I noticed that the left-hand side of my equal signs are identical, and the only thing that varies is my right-hand side. Well, okay, that's actually really important. So when we do these type of things, we're looking for, are the equations the same? Can we work out whether they're the same? Have they tried to trick us? Or more importantly, are the left-hand side of the equals the same? Because if they are, when I sketch them, what I notice is those lines are parallel. Now, obviously, the great thing about parallel lines is they are never going to meet. And if they're never going to meet, then we can't solve them for a crossing point. And you're going to go, hold on, what's this crossing point business? Remember, simultaneous equations are finding the solution where lines meet. So generally speaking, they will meet in one place, if we're lucky. But if we go back to the parallel line section, well, the whole point of being parallel is they can go on to infinity and beyond, and they will never, ever meet. What does that mean for this one here, though, the lines that are exactly the same? Well, if they're exactly the same, how many times do those lines intersect? And the answer is an infinite number of times. So now we sort of lied to you or we constrained things back in years 9 and 10 to only give you part of the story. We always made sure that those lines would cross. But actually, there are three cases for straight lines. They are either parallel, they're the same, or they cross once. And that's going to be very important to the Methods 1 and 2 course. So um, I suppose having had the theory, let's move on to sort of solving some. And what I just taught you a moment ago is massive in Methods 3 and 4. It's huge in next year's course. So it's a very good idea to understand how simultaneous equations can be one, none, or infinite number of solutions. Right, so how do we do this? Uh, as I say here, lots of people think that substitution is the easiest, uh, and for, for some equations it is. When you substitute in, you take one of the equations and literally substitute it into the other. Um, but you have to make sure that you're using the right tool. And I've said here, to dig a tunnel out of school, would you use a spoon or a shovel? Me, personally, I'd use a huge forklift truck or a huge digger because it'd be much, much quicker than a spoon or a shovel, but whole new discussion. So when the question states you've got to do it a particular method, you have to do it a particular method. So this question says solve the following simultaneous equations by substitution. Now, when you substitute, as with footy or soccer or whatever sport you're, you're out there doing, you're taking one thing out and putting something in its place. Now, I know in this situation here that when two lines cross, that at this point here, the x value and the y value is the same for both lines. So it would suggest for that one point and that one point only that this y value here and that y value there are identical. So I can substitute. So I can take my second equation, say, well, my second equation was y equals 5x minus 6. I know for my first equation that y is equal to 3x plus 2. So I literally write that under my second equation. So I end up with 3x plus 2 equals 5x minus 6. Now, to me, that's a joke. That is now so easy. It goes back to one of my previous videos on solving this linear lily. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of 3x's on both sides to give me 2 is equal to 2x minus 6. Now, I'm going to start cutting out those intermediate lines of working because I probably don't need to put them in. All right, so that's 3x has been taken, and I'm going to add 6 to both sides to get rid of that, which is going to give me 8 is equal to 2x. And so x is equal to 4. And it's at this point, most people go, yeah, I'm done, move on. And I'm like, no, 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 you haven't done. You've only found one part. Simultaneous equations, remember, are coordinates. So you have to find an x value and a y value. So having found my x value, how do I find my y value? I know, too complicated. Well, it really isn't because we can use either of these equations here. So using that uh, first equation, I had y is equal to 3x plus 2. I now know that x is 4, so y becomes equal to 3 times 4 plus 2, so y becomes equal to 14, and life is good, sort of. My advice to you now is to go back and check, because while sometimes you might think that your simultaneous equations have worked, you've only used one equation. You have to make sure that it works for both equations. So when I was back in school with good old Mr. White, he would make sure that we then checked with the second equation. So assuming that I've got my maths right, I should be able to say then that y is equal to 5 times 4, which is 20, minus 6, y equals 14. Do they both equal the same thing? They do. Yay. I've got it correct. So that was good. Thank you very much. Uh, what about this next example? Again, it says by substitution. Slightly different format. We've now got it in this x column and a y column and a number column. But the point of it is, I'm trying to substitute out one of the letters. Now. As my screen moves, 
In this situation here, how many unknowns do I have in that equation? I've got two unknowns, and if I have two unknowns, I have to find two equations to solve it, or substitute out the thing I don't know. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, well, two x minus two y equals equal to 10. Can I get rid of this y? Is there another equation that I can rearrange and put in its place? Well, uh, I should Coco, there's this one here. I've got three x plus y is equal to three. And I can isolate my y by taking away three x's from both sides. So doing that, I've now got, a, for that one point, remember, and that one point only where they cross, I know the y's and x's in both the equations are the same. So two x minus two. Now you must put this in brackets, and I'll explain why in just a moment equals 10. So all I've done is I've substituted that y out. So many people do this, 2x minus 2, 3, whoops, minus 3x is equal to 10. And mathematically, there are so many things that could go wrong there. In the heat of an exam, you might read that as minus 23. This minus here won't now take account of that minus there, and there won't become a plus, and it all goes horribly, horribly wrong. And many people actually make mistakes just with basic mathematics, not, not the biggest stuff, it's the algebra that throws them. So moving this up and solving this, I get 2x minus 6 plus 6x is equal to 10. Let's do a bit of simplification. 8x is uh, minus 6 is equal to 10. Add 6 to both sides gives me 16, and so x is equal to 2. Thank you very much, I'm finished. Uh, no, I have to go back. Now I may as well use the equation we've got here, y is equal to 3 minus 3x, I know now that x is equal to 2, 3 minus 3 times 2, which is 6, which gives me y is equal to minus 3. And just make sure that I'm going to check that this is true. So let me see, 2x gives me 4, minus 2 times minus 3 is minus 6, which does in fact give me 10. And so I am now happy that my solution is x equals 2 and y equals minus 3. Word of warning, and I should have done it in the one before. You then need to express your answer as a coordinate. So in this situation here, I would then say, therefore, my crossing point is two comma minus three, because you're finding a coordinate here. It is so, so important. Next one, solve the following simultaneous equations by elimination. Well, okay, now we've been told to eliminate. So what we're trying to do when we eliminate is look for a coefficient of x or a coefficient of y that are the same. And in this situation, if I look at my coefficient of x's, they're four and two, not the same. Coefficients of my y's are actually one. One's a positive, one's a negative, it doesn't matter. I need to make sure that my coefficients of either the x or the y are the same to help me eliminate. So because I know that that's a coefficient of one, what I now do is I look at the signs in front of the letters. And I've got a positive and a negative. Now, do you remember a positive and negative would normally give you a negative? Well, if I now want to know whether I'm going to, how to eliminate these, I do the opposite of what that stage was expecting. So a plus and a minus is normally a minus. So I'm going to add them together. I draw a line because Mr. White told me to. See, I'm preconditioned, Pavlov's dog. And I'm just going to add them together. So I get 4x plus 2x is 6x. I just add the columns together. Plus y plus minus y eliminates. Thank you very much. That's why we're doing it. And what do we get? Minus 1 plus minus 5 is minus 6. And so x beautifully gives me negative 1. And I'm finished. No, you're getting wise to this now. So now let's substitute that back into my first equation, which is 4x plus y is equal to negative 1. So what do I get? 4 times negative 1 plus y is minus 1, minus 4 plus y is equal to minus 1. So y should equal 3. And I must go back and check now, actually what you don't know because I deleted it and re-recorded it, is that I made a mistake. I substituted in the wrong sign. I, put, I just misread the plus here for a minus. I ended up with wrong values. It seemed to work until I substituted it into my second equation. So now what I'm going to do is take the second equation, 2x plus, no, see I've done it again. It's so hard. I really shouldn't have crossed those through. It would have made life so much easier. 2x minus y is equal to negative 5. So let's just check. 2x is a negative 2 minus 3. Does that equal minus 5? It does. And I'm very, very happy. Thank you very much. An example here where we solve the following simultaneous equations by elimination. Now, this situation, remember, the first check is, are the coefficients in front of my pronumerals the same for the x or the y? Well, I've got a 3 and a 2, so no, and a 2 and a 3, so no. Okay, right, well, what I now need to do is some algebraic manipulation. I need to turn one of those coefficients to be the same, either the x's or the y's. It doesn't matter which one you choose. Sometimes it's more about 
the multiplication and which number and, and sort of making the maths easier. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to multiply this top equation by 2 and this bottom equation by 3. Now the reason I'm going to do that is that will turn both of those first x coefficients into 6. So what do I get? Now, uh, again, word of warning, when you multiply, you have to multiply every single term by the same thing. So what do I get? 6x plus 4y is equal to 32. Whew, tough maths there. And 6x plus 9y is equal to uh, ooh, 19 times 3, 9, 18, 27, that would give me 57. Right, now, so we've almost redefined my question. Draw a line, because Mr. White told me to. Thank you, Pavlov's dog, very good. What uh, coefficient is the same? It's the 6. What's in front of both of them? Pluses. A plus and a plus would normally be a plus. So for this stage and this stage only, I'm going to take them away. That means that they eliminate. 4y minus 9y gives me minus 5y. And 32 minus 57 gives me uh, 25 and negative 25. Now, again, people go to me, well, does it matter whether you do the top take away the bottom or the bottom take away the top? Not at all. I could have done 9y minus 4y. The problem with that is people tend to get confused. They Their brains tend to do a bit of a... And they'll do the 9y minus the 4y, but then do the 32 minus the 57. They'll get it the wrong way around. But anyway, so y now in this situation comes out to be 5. I've got my y value. How do I find my x value? Substitute back into this first equation. So 3x plus 2y is equal to 16. We now know y is 5. So 3x is plus 2 times 5 is 10 is 16. 3x is equal to 6 by taking away 10 from both sides. So x is equal to 2, and I need to check by taking my 2x plus 3y is equal to 19, and just check, 2x's are 4, 3y's is 15. Does that equal 19? It does, so I is happy. And expressing my answer as a coordinate. Respect, we are done. Did I express this previous one as a coordinate? No, I didn't. Come on, maths guru, get a grip. Finally, because this is a CAS course, I'll show you how to do it on a CAS. Um, I'm a TA, uh, sorry, I'm a Casio ClassPad user, and so, my apologies if you are a TI Inspire. I'll do videos for all of those calculators a little bit later on. But, so loading up my CAS, here we go, hitting main and my keyboard. I'm in Maths 1, and this is my solve my um, series of, or what is it called? Solve my equations. I can't remember. System of equations. There we go. Solve my system of equations. I know that's TI Inspire talk, by the way. So I've got two equations to solve, and actually it's so easy. All I'm going to do is put this in. 3x plus 2y is equal to 16. In my first line, I'm going to go down. I'm going to say that I've got 2x plus 3y is equal to 19. And then I have to make sure I go across. That little box there says, well, what do you want me to solve for? Because we always have to tell the calculator. And in this situation, because I've used the letters x and y, that's what I want the calculator to solve for, x and y. If you'd used a and b or other um, pronumerals, then that's what you'd put there. Hit enter, and lo and behold, x equals 2 and y equals 5, and that was a lot, lot quicker than doing anything else. So why can't we use the CAS? Well, we can uh, in CAS enable papers, but unfortunately only one of the methods papers uh, next year is CAS enabled or technology enabled, so you still need to be able to do it by hand. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I am done. Thank you so much for taking the time and watching. It is good to see you. If you haven't already done so, you can do me a favor and click that little button there that says subscribe. Uh, greatly appreciated and actually send out messages to your friends would be good as two. Otherwise, I'll look forward to seeing you next time. In the meantime, there is a video loading for you over there for you to have more maths fun. All right, I look forward to seeing you next time. This is Maths Guru out. Take care. Bye-bye.